now. So this is being recorded. Um, next slide, please. So he, here's a good um, rundown of, of why we're here. The blue dots that you see on the chart on the left, the Willamette River at Salem, that's a uh, volume of water. Um, and then elevations where you see major flooding, minor flooding, and bank full conditions. We're always trying to throttle this system to about bank full when we're operating for flood conditions. And uh, what you see with the blue dots are unregulated peak, that's modeled flow. What you see with the orange dots are actual flows. And by looking at where the blue dots are versus where the orange dots are for the same events, you can see that this system makes a tremendous difference and provides great benefits for flood risk management. We, we estimate in real rough terms maybe $2 billion a year of average annual flood damages prevented. In April of 2019, we had one storm event that um, very conservatively pre prevented about $1.8 billion of damages due to, to flooding. And that was one storm over a, kind of a long weekend. Um, what you see, the photo on the right, that's unregulated flow. I think that is um, around the Mary's River area um, that flows into the Willamette, but there are no dams, there's no flood protection on the Mary's River, and, and, uh, and that's typically what happened throughout the valley um, with some relative frequency before this water resources development system was, was developed. Next slide, please. Our strategy always, as I mentioned, if you look at the months of the year on the bottom and the elevation above uh, sea level um, on, the, uh, on the vertical axis, um, beginning in where we are right now, beginning of, uh, of, of May, we're just about fully refilled the system. Um, we're heading into the beginning of the conservation season where we want to hold on to as much of that water as we can and use it for fish and wildlife habitat, irrigation, water supply downstream, water quality downstream is very important, and conserve it upstream in the reservoir itself for, uh, for recreation purposes. Um, it is a balancing act, and, uh, and we've got to meet all of the legal requirements that we have um, uh, throughout the season um, in order to, uh, to, to manage water wisely. Beginning in September, we pull the reservoirs down, and this is this is one reservoir, but this is pretty much the strategy for all of the reservoirs. We pull um, the storage down to uh, uh, by December to the bottom of the minimum conservation pool, so we have that storage available to us when atmospheric rivers come in and, and drop a lot of precipitation on us. This year was pretty interesting. We uh, and Selena will go into greater detail. But we had uh, uh, parts of this winter were pretty dry after about mid-February until about April. We got a little bit wetter in April and May. Um, but a lot of the precipitation this winter came in the form of snow and a lot of it at low elevations. And so we had uh, in parts of the basin, the Cascades, we had a pretty incredible snow water equivalent tied up in the, in the snow. And that you see coming off right now as we get Warm, sunny days, it's um, really having a positive influence, particularly in the north end of the, of the system. Um, we do have some power storage. That's sort of a, um, I like to think of that as re reserve fuel. And uh, in the case of uh, a really, really dry winter and where the other hydroelectric power generators in the uh, region, including core plants on the Columbia, uh, if they don't have a lot of water um, and there's need to um, augment the grid or provide some stability, we use that power storage water in a, in a power emergency. And we've done that a few times in the last uh, 10 or 12 years. Um, and then below that, dead and inactive storage in any reservoir is, is water that's below any of our outlets that we can't, we can't really use. Um, this is kind of the ideal world. Perfect world is very different than that. You'll see some diagrams and some models that show that. Next slide, please. All right, we have a number of constraints this year, and, and really this is, this is why our snapshot 
uh, in the teacup diagram looks a whole lot different this year than it has in past years. Um, for example, um, at Fall Creek and Cougar, we had delayed refills. And that's a consequence of um, compliance with an injunctive order that really stemmed from litigation that happened in 2019 and uh, uh, plaintiff's relief from a judge that uh, drives us to manage water differently in support of listed species. And um, for example, we had some deep water um, late winter drawdowns of both Fall Creek and, and Cougar um, that we're refilling right now. And it looks like uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that, uh, that this water year um, we're, we're going to have some storage in those reservoirs. Uh, how much is a little bit to be determined and won't be able to know the full extent of that probably until we're um, partway into June. But, uh, but right now, um, you'll see the models later. Intent is to move juvenile fish through the system with uh, maximum survival, minimum mortality, and, uh, and, and good efficiency. Um, at Lookout Point in Hills Creek, uh, those reservoirs are also down um, because we're spilling from Lookout Point and we've been using Hills Creek to, uh, to spill from Lookout Point. Our spillway gates are open and we're, we're kind of passing inflows from Lookout to take water off of the surface and, uh, and move juvenile um, spring chinook through that system downstream. The rest of the system looks pretty good for this time of the year. Early May, uh, Detroit, Green Peter, um, Fern Ridge, um, Cottage Grove and Dorena all look, uh, look pretty good from a, a storage standpoint. Um, I've talked a little bit about uh, balancing needs, talked about weather. Um, we do have some interim risk reduction measures in place as we study issues related to the um, uh, seismic and uh, hydrologic um, potential vulnerabilities that we have at these locations. And by holding the top of our conservation pools down, um, 10 feet at Hills Creek, 5 feet at Lookout, and 5 feet at Detroit, we're able to manage that risk to a tolerable level while we study the issue. Um, uh, biologically, we have um, downstream requirements, minimum flows at various, and they change throughout the year depending on where fish are at in their, in their life cycle. Uh, so we, we still have those um, 2008 um, biological opinion targets for Chinook salmon and uh, steelhead. Um, uh, again, at Lookout Point, we had an early deep drawdown and we're spilling now. Delayed refill at Fall Creek, delayed refill and early deep drawdown at Cougar. Uh, we will have at Green Peter and Foster um, deep drawdowns that affect end of summer season, mid summer season, and end of summer season recreation availability. And, and that's all um, part of our near-term operational measures and compliance with uh, in, an injunctive order um, that stemmed from some litigation. Um, the downstream fish passage, passage ops, as it's noted in the slide, uh, are anticipated to, to impact access, rec access, at Cougar Fall Creek Lookout Point and Green Peter Reservoirs. And we'll see some models here pretty quickly that Kind of tell us the scope and extent of that. Next slide, please. All right. Um, these slides are uh, Lookout Point and Green Peter, and they show kind of what, what the reservoir looks like when it's full and how much water will be in the reservoir as we get down towards the bottom uh, of these fall deep drawdowns. We start early. We've got to start early in the in the uh, summer and pull these down by specific target dates in the fall. So um, going to be significantly less water at each of these facilities. They're going to be, it's going to be really, uh, these drawdowns are unprecedented during the, uh, the history of this project. So uh, we haven't seen water this low uh, since pre-impoundment and that's going to impact access. And it's also going to impact people. If you, if you go to recreate there, um, if you get down in the reservoir itself, uh, expect mud and expect it to be uh, potentially um, dangerous. We've had folks get stuck in mud at uh, Fall Creek 
when we've had drawdowns for fish operations there in the past. And certainly we'll, uh, we'll be closing um, our parking access and access into our rec areas, our recreation areas. Um, uh, and we don't want people to get in train stuck in that mud and, and uh, uh, occupy emergency rescue personnel to get out. Um, so we'll have some signs up warning people, uh, but uh, ex expect there to be some, some pretty significant changes uh, in these places um, over the course of the next year. All right, next slide, please. Hmm? All right, over to you, Selena. What's happening? All right, thanks, thanks, Eric. All right, well, thanks, yeah, thank you, Eric, for uh, getting that uh, start and intro to some of our limitations on managing the system. So uh, weather being a really big part of what, what drives our ability to refill. Uh, our water year starts in October and, and goes to the end of September, but our refill of these projects starts on February 1st. So. Um, just looking at the overall hydrology, it's, it's been below normal. Uh, you can see on the, the top two graphs where we're at compared to a normal. We're below where we were last year. We're below the, the normal threshold. And just looking since we've been refilling, uh, February was pretty light in, in precip. Uh, got a little bit better in, in March towards the end. And then April definitely got a lot better. But a lot of that was uh, caught in snow, as Eric mentioned. We built a lot of snowpack in the system, and we're still—I mean, we're we're still way above normal. Typically, we're we're pretty much done with snow in our basin, and we still have uh, a above normal peak. So we've got a lot of snow in the system, and we didn't have a lot of that liquid rainfall, which is what really drives refill of these projects. Snowpack is, like Eric said, it really helps us with our base flow, helps us with the summer, a prolonged season. So that's really what I'm, I'm, we're, we're hoping this snow is going to do. It's going to keep us uh, going longer. And then just this last bit of rain uh, that we got last month is really what's peaking us. And then because we have so much snow, that uh, that melt that we're getting right now with the, the warmer temperatures is all just working out very nicely for uh, our refill and our summer uh, levels given uh, that we had such a, an iffy start. Um, but that's, that's why our projects are built like that, and that's why we refill the way we do, because of that uncertainty. And uh, we rely on those, those early months to refill, but we also are very mindful of those extremes um, in, in management, project management. So that's why we're balancing and, and you know, refilling along a, a gradual curve, um, given that we have the hydrology too. To, to follow that curve. <laughs> um, so yeah, snowpack is uh, definitely really good in the, in the system and um, we'll be seeing how that starts coming off. Uh, like Eric said, we started seeing some of that last week or so and we'll be seeing a little bit of that coming up in the next week and then we'll continue seeing that melt throughout the summer. Uh, drought conditions, that's a big part of it as well. Is, and there's a lot of uncertainty this year. It's like, how will that snow melt? given that our soil moisture content might be a little below normal because we've been in a drought. And so we're, we're seeing real time how snow melt happens. Um, you know, we had a lot of wildfires in the basin. How that actually infiltrates and gets into the reservoirs and the river systems is, is still a little uncertain. Um, so we're just taking, taking it day by day and uh, learning each, each water year was a new point on our learning curve. Uh, but Drought-wise, we're looking uh, better than we did last year in most of the three that are in the Atlanta and then most of the state as well. But it's still, we are technically in drought in, in a lot of the state. And the outlook, the climate outlook, uh, is looking to be dry and warm as we're going to see this weekend. So, uh, you know, that's also part of what keeps us full is the late season, season rain. So we'll just keep an eye on things, but. Um, you know, we, we take what we can get and when we can get it and we manage adaptively. <laughs> uh, speaking of adaptively, this is uh, what we use. This is the water supply volume forecast. The River Forecast Center actually puts this out. It's a really great tool. It lets us know what we're expecting to see as far as the volume of water coming through the system. So most of the main points within the Atlanta Basin and most of the basins, uh, they, they have this water supply volume forecast. So we use this at each of our reservoirs to uh, look at what kind of water would we be seeing coming in. So this is looking at 
the volume of water coming between April and September through the Salem gauge is, is an example. And I just want to show the 21 and 22 graphic along with this year, because 21 and 22, we were starting off looking really low. Uh, the green line is normal and, and we're below that. So we're looking low. Uh, in 21, we wound up having a pretty poor water year. We didn't fill all the, the reservoirs. We, we weren't able to meet all the biological requirements. It was just not a great year because we didn't have that season precipitation we needed. But on the flip side, last year, we were looking that same way. We were preparing for another drought. And then all of a sudden, we got some late season atmospheric rivers that popped up the water supply volume. And that's, that's what we're dealing with is that uncertainty and we're, we're managing to that uncertainty. So this year, um, you can see where we were starting in April and before April, we were below normal and we, we built that precipitation and started seeing more water in the system. And this is an April through September forecast. So as we see what's coming in in April, that builds that forecast accuracy because now you're using an actual value to provide your forecast. So we're getting more improved forecasts, which is that when we can then provide a more certain forecast for the water year as well. So right now it's looking like things are looking better above normal. Um, but there's still months to go and we're still, you know, they, this will be adjusted, but it likely will uh, just get closer in certainty. And at some point it kind of flat lines as we get into the June time frame. Uh, but if we get any other, uh, you know, significant water events that pop up on us, then things could become like 22. Um, there's a lot of, at this point, it's unlikely that we'll see much more of a drop, but that is also something that, you know, we're, we're monitoring is that up and down of that forecast. So this is really the, the heart of what goes into the volume uh, forecast for our reservoirs is, is essentially this that like uh, Detroit, we have the same type of graphic that we use at Detroit. That's essentially the water volume that would come into Detroit and then we would model that. So I'm gonna jump right into the conservation season forecast. Uh, this is very similar to what Eric already laid out. These are really our kind of sideboards or how we manage. We have our weather, uh, we have our dam safety, and we have a biological requirement. And then we, we have some flexibility within our flow management infrastructure our, uh, structure, uh, that we can work with partner agencies to really shape the season based on what kind of conditions we are really seeing. So early on this year, we were looking like it was gonna be a, a, a poor water year. So we uh, were able to reduce flows on the long Tom that improved refill for Fern Ridge and we reduced on the North San Ian, uh, which is helping help Detroit uh, refill as well. Um, so we do have some opportunities to adjust, but, um, and, and it, they did help at both those projects. And then uh, we do have the main stem augmentation. Uh, we do have main stem augmentation that we do for the Zafne biop because we are drawing down the reservoirs at Green Pier and Lookout Point, which I will show in a little bit. That water is then supporting that main stem flow. And that means that we're not having to pull as hard on other reservoirs as maybe we historically had been uh, to, to provide that flow since uh, I'll just say we would have pulled hard to come uh and, and now uh, we, we aren't doing that. Um, and so, or we were pulling hard from lookout point, but now we're pulling even harder from lookout point because we don't have to pull from other projects like Cougar. Okay. I'm going to go through the Hills Creek slide uh, in a little bit more detail because each one of the reservoirs have the same look but I just want to go through what each thing is. Uh, the top left-hand side, this is the, you know, the rural curve and the each water year, so we just have from 2015 to current. You see where we were historically within Hills Creek. So we kind of been along the rural curve and then below, just mostly hydrology and, and other types of operations that may be in place. You can see Hills Creek, we started off really low and that was part of the injunction uh, uh, operation to support lookout point refill operation. Uh, so I'll show you the lookout point in a second. 
But that's that's why uh, Hills Creek was low. We were really trying to push hard to get lookout points to refill, and then uh, and then we've since uh, reduced outflows. So Hills Creek's back on track uh, where we were similarly last year. Um, and then the graphic on the right is the forecast model. So um, there, this uh, top line is that rural curve. So that's the flood risk management curve. And then these other little things in here is really to help us uh, modelers understand where we have some limitations. We have some, some solar gate work happening to finish uh, work there. So we're just kind of making the res with the reservoir needs stable with solar crest at this time. So that's what the data is showing. And then uh, we're putting on here the projected Labor Day elevation based on the 50% run. It's hard to see on this because they kind of all merge together, but there's three different color coding here. Uh, the blue is the 75 percentile based on that graphic I was showing a minute ago. So it's a 25 percent of the time uh, we might see things a little bit uh, more than that. Um, but 50 percent, uh, and then there's the green line that's the 50 percent. So that's the more likely. So we like to use that as our, our uh, probable target. And then yellow is the 25%. So that's assuming that we would have very little inflow coming in and, and what, what that would reservoir looks like. Uh, and then down here is the inflow in the green. And then the black is that projected outflow to manage the reservoir uh, or um, manage for downstream flow needs. So that's really what we're trying to do we balance uh, various things that we need in the reservoir, such as um, gate work or recreation. Uh, so we're you know, making, trying to make sure that we get have boat ramps available, but we also have uh, flow requirements that we're, we're balancing on the down, uh, downstream side. And so those two wind up showing how we're going to manage. Uh, and then on the bottom left-hand side, this little uh, cartoon to show the different boat ramps that we have and where we're targeting uh, the Labor Day elevation based on this forecast run. So you can see that uh, given Labor when Labor Day uh, comes in September, it's likely that Hatchard Creek will be the only res uh, only boat launch available, uh, given given how we're managing uh, Hills Creek this year. And uh, there's there's lines at the top of the graph on the graph that show those boat ramps. They're just not labeled, but that's what these lines on the the graphic is. Uh, so this is. Packard on the very bottom, so you can see that that's the that's the the only one that we have access to at that time. All right, the so lookout point. Uh, you can see where we are compared to historic. We're right where we were last year, and that is because we are doing one of the court ordered operations, which is to uh, spill from lookout point to free flow for 30 days. So we're just holding the pool right above Silly Crest. For 30 days for fish passage, um, and that's why we push really hard at Hills Creek so that we can get that uh, pool of lookout point fuller. Since we weren't getting that rainfall in there, we weren't getting those flows. So we we pushed it a little bit harder with Hills Creek water, um, and then uh, we're likely to hold it a little bit longer, uh, and, and then that'll allow Hills Creek to refill. Um, and then this is this is the the drawdown component. This is what Eric was talking about. We're going to be drawing down lookout point down to levels we've, we've never done since impoundment. So um, minimum conservation pool is right around here. This uh, eight, around, I think eight, 19, 20, something like around here. Uh, and we're going to be drawing it way down here. So on Labor Day, this is showing that it's very unlikely um, that we're going to have you know, many, we're, gonna, well, we're not going to have any boat ramps on the upper end, but we will still have the low level boat ramp signal point, which is the, the one that's at the minimum conservation pool. So we'll still have that one available for Labor Day. Uh, but once we drop below there, we will not have any boat access um, for the rest of the winter. And that's really what Eric is, is uh, communicating is that time frame, we're not going to have any access to the, the reservoir. Um, this is uh, just about, this is one foot of uh, a drawdown. We're really targeting that at the, the, the end of this drawdown. So this is for our reference. So uh, there is some uncertainty on how this will really be managed. This is the first year we're doing it. Next year might look a little different. 
but this is uh, our interpretation this year and how we're going to manage uh, and then we'll learn from it uh, going forward. Fall Creek. Fall Creek is another operation where we uh, have been holding the reservoir low. We just started the refill uh, this week, so a little bit later than we did last year. Last year we had a uh, different uh, Biologically, there were some uh, different things that we were dealing with last year. Uh, so this year, we did keep the pool down, and based on that forecast, uh, it's not going to fill very full. But that is that is the intent of this operation: is to have the reservoir fill just just about to right here, so that we have enough storage to maintain the fish facility downstream, which requires uh, usage of a certain outlet. Uh, that requires that uh, a, a certain amount of water to operate. So uh, it's looking like we kind of, yeah, we'll, we'll do our best to try to keep um, boat ramps available. Uh, it looks like North Shore, it will be available, uh, but with very, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess that's the only one, so sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll just have North Shore being available. Uh, all the other upper level boat ramps will be unavailable at that time. Uh, Cottage Grove, we don't have any uh, special operations going on there. It was just all based on what kind of inflows we've been seeing. We've been releasing our minimums there. And you can see Cottage Grove has refilled, has a lot of variability in the last uh, few years. Uh, it does look like you know, we were right on roll curve, and it looks like with the sun coming out, and, and that this isn't really a snow driven system, that uh, we may be leveling off with the reservoir uh, coming up soon. And then as we just start releasing our minimums and, and inflows start re coming in lower, the reservoir will draft. So it does look like we'll have a uh, lakeside park boat ramp available. Uh, but maybe Wilson Creek uh, will not be available uh, during Labor Day, but uh, should all be available for Memorial Day. And then Darina uh, just we caught up the rule curve uh, a couple months ago and been holding around there, and uh, it continues to show that we're going to continue filling. It's very, you know, it's a small reservoir and uh, looks like we'll be able to hold near full for most of the season. Um, ho hoping that those inflows continue to be a little bit higher so that we can, can keep it full. Uh, so looks like we should have all the boat ramps available at Arena through Labor Day, uh, but definitely keep an eye on uh, the forecast. And then Fern Ridge, another, it's been, it's, it's uh, been very variable the last few years. But this year, looks, looking good, we were able to hold that reduced rate outflow for since almost started refill, and it's really helped. We've had some decent inflows and actually had to pick up outflows recently uh, as, as we were getting uh, too, too high of, around the curve and have since uh, filled and plan on holding that until we have to start drawing down. So it looks like we'll have all the boat ramps available at Fern Ridge this year for Labor Day. And over to Mackenzie with Cougar. Cougar is one of the operation projects that we're having the delayed refill. And so we just, uh, actually we, we wound up having a lot of inflows to the reservoir, so we actually couldn't keep it down. Uh, we're balancing other biological uh, requirements. And so we're holding it right where we're at for at least another week and then uh, likely start refilling after that. And so that's what the model over here on the right is showing, what is expected um, given that we, if we start refilling next week. And that also has a target kind of like Fall Creek is that we're trying to refill just enough so that we can do temperature management. There is a temperature tower there and so we need to have enough pool there to uh, pull on different water, water, uh, water temperatures for downstream. So it looks like um, because most of their boat ramps are, are high at Cougar, we will not likely have any boat access during Labor Day at 
Vancouver. Then over to Blue River, um, late season, but it got, it picked up and inflows picked up and we got to full. And so we're right, right there on full right now. Uh, Blue River tends to be one of those projects that we do pull hard on for meeting main stem flow targets. And, and that is, this is one of those reservoirs that it doesn't look like we're gonna have to pull that hard this year because of the other, the drawdown operations like at uh, Lookout Point kind of taking on that additional flow. So we're able to use more out of the other projects um, and not pull as hard on Blue River. So it's likely that we'll have at least the saddle dam uh, boat ramp available. Um, but we'll keep an eye on this. This is one of those ones that it can be very uncertain. Uh, we'll plan on releasing uh, around minimum to maybe a couple hundred CFS to help the main stem, but maybe we can adjust that still. So do, do keep an eye on Blue River that we may have more access by then. And then Green Peter, uh, Green Pier, we were able to fill and uh, we'll be keeping that full for another month, month and a half. And then we'll start drawing that project down. So Green Peter, like Lookout Point, is going to be doing a deep, deep drawdown. Uh, so we'll start drawing that down. Uh, you won't really notice too much more, too much of it until really later in the August, September timeframe, which will start drawing it down further below minimum conservation pool and uh, hold that down at these low levels through the winter. Uh, like Lookout Point, this is going to be the first year we're doing it, so there might be some tweaks that we do next year and as we learn how to, to best manage this project uh, given this op these operations. And it looks like the Labor Day uh, target is just below Thistle Creek, so uh, there's potential that we can uh, adjust for that and see where, if we can maybe make that a little bit better. Um, so please keep an eye on Green Peter as well. And then Foster, uh, Foster has a delayed refill and early drawdown. Um, we've been doing similar things at Foster delayed refill for uh, decades, uh, variations of them. There, it's later season now than it historically had been. But the intent is to have Foster refill for Memorial Day and we'll keep it full through Labor Day so that uh, we can have that full voting season. Um, and then we're managing for biological flows downstream. So we should have all the boat ramps available for Memorial Day through Labor Day. And then Detroit, uh, Detroit is another one that you know, we did get a lot of snowpack built and we didn't get a lot of inflows early on. And uh, thankfully things kind of changed for us and we got some good rainfall and it's just nicely filled. And we're right now at that five foot reduction, the dam safety reduction. So we're, we're gonna hold that. It looks like through, through at least July based on this model and based on those inflows. However, our inflows are coming in a little bit higher than what they're technically been forecasting. And it's a lot of that uncertainty with snow, snow pack and snow melt um, especially given that we did have the wildfires up there. There's just a lot of uncertainty in how that will really melt and how it will reach, reach the, the water uh, ground levels and, and reservoir levels. So uh, it is looking pretty good. Um, you know, definitely uncertainty going into Labor Day, but most boat ramps should be available at Detroit. So um, definitely a, a change in what we were forecasting uh, back in late March and a much much nicer forecast. <laughs> yeah. uh, so one of the things that we are doing is we're releasing not only for tributary part requirements for ESA listed species, but we're also targeting flows on the main stem to help that migration. And so this is just showing what the main stem flows would look like. The blue line is essentially where we're trying to target um, at least get getting there. So. Um, you see, we may be having a little bit of trouble at Albany later on the season. We're below that, a little bit at Salem. So that's where we may have to, you know, adjust some of our management in, in real time if those things wind up being 
you know, really well. We need to maintain the water quality on the main stem as well. So I just like want to summarize, um, you know, every, every water year is very unique uh, in the weather. Primarily, you know, rain is the key driver for optimal refill. Uh, we do have some new system constraints and operations this year that we're, we're, we're working through. Um, they're, they're very challenging and we're doing the, the best we can with what we have. And uh, just wanted to remind everyone that the rec you know, recreation and access may be impacted this year given these operations and just to keep an eye out for that forecast um, continue looking out for the forecast and water levels, um, which you can see are two cups. Um, here are some uh, links that you can go to. The two cups is one of my favorites. It, you can, you know, see what kind of releases we have planned, what where the water levels are. Uh, there's also this national site for water management data that you can always go to to look at um, various information. And our water control manuals are actually located in this site. This is a new thing, of, I think, the last couple of years, that our water control manuals are accessible from that National Water Management Data site. So if you want to see how, how we are bound for managing the dams, that's a good uh, resource and some other good resources as well. Um, I'd like to hand this back off to maybe Eric or Terry, but we can open up to uh, questions, I believe. Selena, well, I'll just say it's a good rundown. Um, I'm certainly more optimistic with this water year uh, conservation season than I was a month, month and a half ago. And uh, I, I would say always when we have a lot of snow, um, our models typically underestimate the effects of that, particularly in the north part of the basin. And we're seeing, seeing it play out exactly that way. Um, I would, I would much rather plan pessimistically and then be able to, uh, to have a better season than what we estimate than, than over promise and under deliver folks. So uh, I think that's where we're at right now. I also wanna say with these new operations, the near-term operational measures for fish, we're applying an extensive amount of uh, research, monitoring and evaluation to study the efficacy of, uh, of what we're doing to see what difference it's making. And, uh, and those measures combined with some other activities um, in, the, in the basin uh, will hopefully um, help imperiled species in significant ways. So we'll, we'll know more as we do more. And, uh, and this will be the start of a number of unique water years for us. Thanks for your rundown. Um, Carrie, um, I guess uh, if there are no questions, um, back to you. Sure, I wanted to give everybody a last chance for questions if you wanted to put those in the chat, or you can always email us at uh, the Corps of Engineers. Um, you can find that if you visit our website, it's www.nwp.usace.army.mil. Um, you can also follow us on social media at Portland Core. Um, and if you have any other questions, um, again, you can submit it through the website, through our social media sites. And we're also having another water year meeting. Is it tomorrow evening, Eric? I believe. Yes. It is five o'clock p.m. Okay, great. So if you have um, anybody you'd like to. Um, you think should hear this information that's available to them. And um, thank you for everybody who listened in and we appreciate your interest. And I think that wraps it up for us. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you.